What is up, brothers and sisters? It's Jay Campbell, and you're listening to the Jay Campbell Podcast. Join me for regular deep dives with amazing beings whose work is manifesting a golden age. And remember, you create your reality by your focused thoughts, conscious words, and intentional actions. Raise your vibration to optimize your love creation. Hey guys, what is going on? It's Jay Campbell on the Jay Campbell Podcast, and I'm very, very excited today to be joined in my virtual studio by Mary Ann Simpson. Mary Ann, it is an honor to have you on the show today. How are you? Great. Thanks, Jay. Thanks for having me. So you guys, Mary Ann, I'm very excited about this podcast before we get into it, but Mary Ann is a very, very advanced practitioner with helping women become hormonally optimized along with physically optimized, health optimized, all that stuff. She's come highly recommended. I've wanted to get her on this show for a long time. I saved having her come on because I wanted to have her on the Jay Campbell podcast because she is truly part of the golden age. She is helping so many women and not enough people right now in the world know about her, but that's all about to change. So as I always do, Marianne, let me give uh, your uh, bio real quick. So she is an RN since 1986. She's worked in a hospital for eight years in labor and delivery. She also graduated with her advanced nurse practitioner degree in 1994. And literally for the next 20 years, she worked as an OBGYN most of the time at the University of California, Davis. She began prescribing hormones in 2005, which is epic, and was the only UC Davis provider to do so. In 2013, she began her private practice, which is Embody Wellness, in order to have more time with patients and, of course, the freedom and flexibility to offer the latest in HRT, hormone replacement therapy. As uh, Marianne knows, I hate saying replacement because I like to say optimization. So instead of mm-hmm. HRT, we'll say HOT. Got it. She's obviously very, very well known. Um, her patients have been able to make incredible positive shifts in their lives. And she's guided obviously many men and women, of course, through the process of hormone and health optimization. So as I do on this podcast, before we get into the meat and potatoes, how did Marianne Simpson get on this podcast talking to Jay Campbell? Oh, good question. Okay, I had this really awesome man, male patient, and his name is Mike. And two years ago, he asked me if I would seen your podcast. And I was so happy because as soon as I got home, I, I went on and listened to everything I could find. And I was the, be- the most beautiful thing was that I didn't have to prescribe um, aromatase inhibitors anymore. <laughs> and <laughs> I hated doing it, but it was drilled into my head. And a lot of the men came in and they wanted their estrogen at zero, like you know, and all your people that listen to you know. You got to keep the testosterone high and the estrogen low. Right. And so, and, 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 and I just love that. And I, I have such great results, but that's how I got introduced to you. And um, I've been listening ever since. And it's been, it's changed my whole practice with men. And um, it's just, so exciting to have them come in and not get those peaks and valleys and not be worried about their estrogen because now I tell them they have great health, heart health, and they like that. And I really don't have a, a lot of symptoms of that being a problem. So that's, that's awesome. So it's, it's so big. We don't even realize even that one little tiny thing, how it's changed um, the men and, and their optimization of their hormones and their health. So you're an amazing person. You know, I want to share, obviously you and I just met at um, A4M in Las Vegas. And obviously you've been a fan, as you said, of the work and, you know, you and I had corresponded by emails, but I wanted to, mm-hmm. you know, share the story with you in meeting you. You have actually an amazing story, which I would love for you to share kind of about your past and your life and stuff like that. But uh, it's, it's an honor to finally have you here, but, you know, just talk a little bit about, you know, your family, you know, your experience, like personally um, with hormones and just, you know, how you got to here. Well, I, I, I I ended up, um, while I was working, I had, I started getting not feeling well and I had a lot of chronic fatigue and I had, and then I was eventually diagnosed with fibromyalgia and I, I, and I had melanoma and I'm really actually, I've always been a really healthy person, but I had some genetic mutations. And so I started, uh, my treatment, you know, like we hear the story all the time, and especially with health providers that end up getting out of the system, um, because they actually had the personal experience that didn't help themselves. And so, uh, my treatment was pain pills and antidepressants like everybody else. And I really had like this God thing. I just was like, no. And sure. it was interesting to me because was soul, I'm, by the way, it was your yeah, soul, it was my soul telling and you no. no way. And I'm a kind of tend to be a rule follower. And I, 
I like to do the right thing, and I'm usually say, okay, yeah. And so when when I got that response, but Marianne, let me stop you real quick. The, the rule I, I, is so profound. I don't mean to interrupt you, but I want no, to no, go like, back to that. So the rule yeah. follower. So yeah. we're all rule followers until we listen to our higher self, which is our That's soul. Right. Yeah. And what you said is so profound because we all are like that, and we have to train ourselves to listen to what we all know is the higher self, which is guiding us, which is God. Yeah. And, and, and as a medical person and as you know, a, a man of science, which obviously I didn't go to medical school, but I mean, mm -hmm. I have a lot of background in molecular bio. We're mm -hmm. trained to follow the rules. And it works in our benefit a lot of the times, but, but then sometimes it doesn't, you know. But it's knowing when it doesn't to stop. Right. Anyway, go back to your story. Yeah. I, I wanted to just hit on Yes, that. but I was really surprised at my response because it, I, it wasn't usual for me. And so then I thought, well, I have to really listen to that. And I'm really very intuitive anyway. And I um, started training integrative functional medicine. And I, over a two-year period, healed everything um, with the recipe that I've learned to um, share with my patients now. And, um, and also with those mutations, I have three sons and they all have autoimmune disease. One has chronic Lyme, but it's probably from other things. And I have a son with MS and I have a son with arthritis, but they're all doing well and thriving and amazing. Um, and I raised them really healthy, but so that's just part of the story. And then, you know, going out of uh, the network and, and cause when I was sick, I didn't even think about going to anybody else. Like I was in the system. I didn't even think I had a choice. I didn't even, like it didn't even enter my mind that I could go somewhere else for, you know, for help. And so we ended up going to a lot of medical centers, you know, like healing centers, you know, stem cell things, detox things, like all these different, and spending $100,000 of, you know, our savings to, for our ch children to get well. And so then when that was our focus opening in body wellness is that we wanted to offer the the best care and make it affordable, even though we ha you have a business, but so that people had access and also finding the best products, the best prices, um, like doing labs that doesn't, you know, put $2,000, like finding the best. <laughs> I think we all, we all, all that. that before. I remember when I first started working with a doctor in Florida who will, who will remain nameless. Uh -huh. I still think we're friends. I mean, I don't ever really, I don't burn bridges, but yeah, he, his insurance was so, they were so stupid. He put me and Monica's stuff through it and I got the, the quest diagnostics or maybe it was lab court. doesn't remember. It was a 30, $2,900 bill right. for each of us. And I'm like, what it, the it, hell it is this? It didn't get started yet. I, exactly. I mean, it was like, what is this? I mean, like, you know, again, we're wellness and optimization. Oh, well, you're not sex. There's no code. You know, this is not me. Yep. So you were charging me out the ass. And dude, I fought them for a year. And they eventually lowered it, I think, to like 1400 for each of us. But still, right. it's a crime when you know you can go to any independent lab company and get the test for 300 bucks. Oh, yeah. We, we have a great source for labs. And we're so happy to be able to, you know, be a contribution to our community in that awesome. way. Yeah. Yes. It's a racket. So, you so know that's that. kind of what all ha how it all kind of evolved over the years. It wasn't like something that we actually had. A, it just It's just kind of, you know, evolved. And we have Dr. Hansen here who does, who works with Dr. Schallenberger in Tahoe and he does PRP and stem cells and ozone. Awesome. And we have Dr. Dang who studied with Dr. Klinghart that works on Lyme disease and who knew I mean, what else is possible. We had, we, this was not in the plan, but you know, on our conscious plan, but things have just evolved into such a beautiful thing when we following our hearts and, and exactly. doing the right That's thing. It. And when you follow your heart and you are yep. an amazing person, I want to share that with my audience. Um, okay. And that's obviously why you're doing the podcast here today. Now let's get into the meat and potatoes. And this yeah. is, the, so the real high value, again, to set this up is you are essentially a master in working with women. You've been working with women since 2005. Mm -hmm. You understand the intricacies of the endocrine systems in women, which are obviously, you think, easier to balance than men, which I can't wait <laughs> to get into. You know, most physicians will say the opposite, but again, most likely because they're not really good at balancing and dialing in women. So I'm very excited to get into that. So mm -hmm. the first point, and again, we go wherever you want with this, is mm -hmm. as a woman, who is a candidate, a candidate for, for, for hormone optimization? All of women that, who want to be healthy and to feel good and to have quality of life that every woman is a candidate, so even if they've had age? cancer. So they're going to ask this question, is there an oh. age where a woman should start to consider it? Well, I have 
14 year olds all the way to 80 year olds. So I was hope I was hopeful you were going to say that. So there is no age. It's when the their symptoms are showing up, correct? Well, especially nowadays because yeah. they're like, you know, you your audience already knows all about the endocrine disruptors. They're just disrupting as women as they are in men. So talk and they're about so that. estrogen dominant. Yeah, so talk, okay, so talk about that because obviously yes, you know, if you're if you're familiar with Anthony, um, you know, Dr. Anthony J is obviously a close personal friend. Love Anthony. Shout outs to Anthony yeah. on his book is Estrogeneration, right? And it talks about mm-hmm. what we're doing. It's an absolute toxic soup bowl, you know, in all the freshwater streams in America right now, really in the West, the, 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 the male fish are becoming female fish. Yeah. So we yes. are literally feminizing everything. Yes. But yeah. as you said, what most women don't understand is it also is chemically castrating them. Talk a little bit about yeah. what endocrine disruption is doing to women of what say they're, you know, in their late teens, twenties, thirties, who aren't quote unquote, normally considered a candidate for hormone optimization. Well, a lot of times it's because, you know, they are exposed to all the xenoestrogens yes. and, you know, it's a lot to have fire retardants in our beds because people used to fall asleep with cigarettes. And so now we're all breathing yes. in fire retardants Birth and there pills. it's a year that's, it's a lot to put them in pajamas. Birth control pills are terrible for women and not only physically, <laughs> but it disconnects them from their own power yes. because we need to be connected to our feminine yes. cycles because it makes us stronger. It helps yes. us live more from our hearts yes. and, and, and people don't know that they're you know like my patient said to me the other day it's it's a a, a death by a thousand tiny cuts so so the, it's the, they're not creating pathways in their brain that says when i go to mcdonald's every day it's not that those are that's not the food I mean, it's the chemicals that's hurting yeah. them and yeah. they they're not getting the instant response so a lot of it's just educating them so are you taking so this is all amazing very high level stuff so are you taking women who come to you in their late teens and their early 20s or 30s off of birth control and yes. showing them a better way? I mean, talk yes. about that. Well, it's just so convenient because they have acne and they have heavy periods and they're, and they're moody and they can't sleep and they have anxiety. And so the, the pill is easy. It's kind of like a cortisone shot. You know, you get on the pill and you feel great, but the long-term problems with birth control pills are, are devastating. Horrific. Right. And they're ruining the DNA for our Absolutely. future generations. They're ruining the DNA. I want you to talk about that because obviously I wrote about that in Living a Fully Optimized Life. There are studies, again, Anthony J is also big on this. There are studies out there. And again, I have the primary study in the book mm-hmm. that at the second and third order, so yeah. we're talking 15 to 20 years after the baby is born in utero, yeah. the effects are starting to show up. And you and I talked mm-hmm. about it. Men are more feminine. Yeah. They are weaker. They have brittle bones. I mean, again, yeah. one of my good friends, John Ritter, is writing a book on childhood obesity right now. He has right. all these studies that show how brittle the bones are of these young kids who did have mothers that were on birth control for five to 10 years before they were, you know, yeah. withdrew. So you're right. The, the birth control pills are literally may, maybe, and this is just my opinion, and I cannot prove this, but again, there's very smart scientific people who are saying that it is, but birth control pills in the water runoff. So yeah. all the water treatment plants in the world are yeah. probably one of the main reasons for such endocrine disruption for not just men, um, uh, obviously right. the women that are using them, but for their babies that are born later. Yeah. Yeah. And just, um, I, I, like I was saying earlier, I just think the psychological part of us covering up, you know, our, our ovaries, like we're, we're, uh, you know, we're just obliterating our own power by suppressing our own ovarian function. It's going to connect us to our pineal gland. That's connect us to our higher power. So, and 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 I love the the changing the DNA for our future generations because I'm looking for implementation. Right. Like, what can I use to imp- these people to implement? Because if I don't have something that's going to really matter to them, they're they're not going to want to get off. So, Marianne, should I, I, I love my, that one. Should I go get? This is awesome. Should I go get my tinfoil hat real quick so we can? Yes, because I. Oh yeah, I got mine on. <laughs> I mean, I'm this proud is. Of I it. mean, look, look. We are in the 2020s it. now. This yes. is the Jay Campbell podcast. We don't. Yes. There, nothing is off off the table. We can talk about anything here. I'm not just you know afraid of the establishment or big pharma. Uh-huh. You just said it. They are literally altering our DNA. It is 100% intentional. People will say, oh, it's, it's indirect. You know, all the scientists, people, that, you know, I call them the scientismists mm-hmm. are going to defend it and say it's an indirect product of modernization. No, it's not. Oh, no. They are 
absolutely, as you said, pulling us away from our heart chakras. Yeah. They are making us more left brain, more rigid, more less open. And you're right. And they're indoctrinating people to the point of like, where's the easy pill? The birth control pill is an easy button. Yeah. It Everybody is. wants an easy button. Technology creates the easy button. Okay, so solutions, we've identified the problem. We know what's going on. So what do you do with these women when they come to you and they say, Marianne, I can't come off the pill? Well, I just try to encourage them. Like I say, I just tell them all the things that it, that's happening to them. And, yeah. and really talking, because women want to be empowered. Of course. You know, they don't know that the pills are, are not empowering them. And I don't really have a lot of patients on the pill. I have yeah. a few that i gotten off, but I don't. I, my, my, my largest population isn't that age, but, but when I do have them, it's, it's, it's just because it takes effort to watch your cycle sure. and, you know, the, and there's other things to do besides be on the field. Right. Yeah. Right. Detoxification and right. meta I3C there's um, progesterone is, is wonderful for, yeah, absolutely. Uh, for estrogen dominance. Like let's yeah. just get rid of the estrogen. What would you say the percentage of women right now, 30 and up in the United States are estrogen dominant? What is just a guess? What is your guess? 98. Oh my God. Yeah. And yeah. the problem when not, not only are they estrogen dominant, but they're progesterone and testosterone deficient. So it makes them literally crazy. It makes them crazy. And it also puts them at risk for cancer. Jesus. It, you know, they're going to have all the estrogen receptive cancer risk. And then, and then, okay, so let's just fast forward. Let's you know, put the social media narrative out there, right? Like mm -hmm. you just identified why women are biologically completely in this like fissure. It's like they have this, you know, compression. It's a vice. So they have all these biological downstream effects, craziness, yeah. imbalanced hormones is one. You, you look at all these weak men who won't, you know, they're, they're, there's a lack of strong men in society now because they're dealing with women craziness. <laughs> and knowing that they really, quote unquote, or perceived at least that they don't really have rights or that they could have them taken away. This is what, again, you know, my tinfoil hat, mm -hmm. this is what they, whoever they are, want. They want this insanity, yeah. this, this, this uh, as you said, this distraction. Lack of balance. Yeah, destruction. It's a, lack distra of balance it's a distraction. Yeah. There, it's a distraction because we can't, you know, we're powerful, but that distracts it. Yeah. yeah. And one of the things that, that really impressed me when you and I spoke is that, you know, women should be feminine. They should desire yeah. strong men. They should be wanting to be in an awesome relationship where they feel protected and secure from their man. And, you know, the, the mainstream narrative is the opposite. Oh, the women can control and call the shots and the men can just be slaves and be house dads and all this stuff. It's insanity. Mm -hmm. It's literally insanity. You said it right. Okay. So mm -hmm. let's get into delivery yeah. systems. Let's get into okay how good you are doing this stuff. Now, again, mm -hmm. I asked you this question and when you told me the answer, I was like, okay, uh -huh. Marian, I got to get you on there. I got to <laughs> get you on the podcast right away. So obviously, let me just set this up. So a lot of physicians believe that there are two ways to optimize a woman hormonally. And that's obviously with static dosing and sickling dosing. And there's people out there that will defend either or. And obviously, I'm going to let you share your answer with me. But why is there, before you tell me the right way to do it, why is there such a dichotomy of people thinking it's one way or the other? I think that in the anti-aging realm, providers want to maximize um, what women have when they're younger, but it's not really, having cycles is for procreation. Of course. And of course. Of course. So <laughs> it's not really necessary. I mean, I'm, I'm, I'm a team player, so if I have patients that want to have a period, I'm not going to say, you can't, I'm not going to do that. I have a, a several 30-year-old um, women that are premature menopause. Wow. And they don't want to not have periods. They and don't feel normal. That, but that's honestly literally just from the chemical castration. It is. I mean, what, what is that, you know? Jesus Christ. So, but it's, so I'm, there, but there's no real medical indication for that. Of course, not because the indicate the intention behind hormone replacement is to support our DNA replication, so that we can make healthy cells when we replicate our bodies, make new skin, make new livers. We want to be able to to sub to support that. Um, so when we get older, we're not having periods anymore. Our ovaries have failed. We're not. The intention isn't to give women hormones so they have periods because 98% of us don't want periods. Right. If you do, I'll do it. I don't want Monica want. to have her period anymore. But there's no, I there's no to have sex whenever I want. I know. There's no reason to do that. But again, you know, there's no medical reason. 
Yeah, okay, so when you when you get a woman, and I'm just going to give a general garden variety, I'm, I'm just going to uh -huh. say a 40 year old woman comes to you. She's chemically castrated. She's depressed. Mm -hmm. She's a wreck. She's crazy. Yes. What do you do? What is your first line of treatment? And just you know, talk about what you do. Okay. Well, I we I talk about sleep, um, and because everybody knows the importance of sleep, but how do you do it? How can we get people to sleep good? And so I talk about sleep hygiene, of and course. that's a whole. We could talk about that for an hour. And then, um, because, you know, I have a lot of women on Ambien and, and Benadryl PM Jesus, because they're Crazy. just, they can't sleep. They're desperate. And then, um, and then we well, do. Wait a minute, let me ask you, yeah. is that because, I mean, because we all, you know, obviously I'm a big proponent of sleep hygiene too, but is that because yeah. of the blue light? Yes. Or, it, or is it because of the chemical imbalance? It's everything. Thing? It's both. Yeah. yeah, it's it's stress. It's, it's no progesterone. It's, it's too much. I mean, it's just like a lot of things. I mean, honestly, it's so, I mean, obviously, you know, you met Monica, I'm very blessed. Yep. I have an amazing woman who understands all these things, but the average man and woman right now in America, the, the man is deficient testosterone and the woman is completely chemically castrated. So imagine the dysfunction in the relationship. Yeah. How do you have a good marriage? It's impossible. I know it really is. So, it, so, it, so back, so good. back. Okay. So you take uh -huh. this 40 year old woman in, you talk about sleep hygiene. Yeah. Then, uh, then nutrition. What? So I have, we do it. We, I like, I like a micronutrient test because a lot of women have deficiencies Absolutely. Um, and they have a lot of B deficiencies and they, and they have a lot of anxiety because they're nutrient deficient. So uh, we talk about nutrition and I, and I like to get the micronutrient test. And I then I actually, say, so, so what about microbiome? Are you guys doing any kind of like micro, I mean, there really isn't great microbiome analysis, but I mean, you can test for obviously an infected microbiome. I don't do a lot of that because I because it's it's can be expensive and I sure. just treat the microbiome mm -hmm. because the body's mm -hmm. intelligent it's going to heal. We just right. have to remove the things that are causing the problems and we exactly. need to add the things that are going to help the microbiome heal. It just it happens. It just you happens. You mean like sugar, organically, and alcohol, and GMO and, food? Yeah, glyphosate. Yeah, all that. It's like. I yeah. mean, I, so I, I, you'll love this. So I, the podcast before you again with uh, Eric North in uh, DC, we, we were talking about like what it's like to be a parent and he's 55, you know, I'm a year away from turning 50, but like what it's like to be a very health conscious parent today. And you know this with your own kids, yeah. you can't go to a grocery store and buy anything that's healthy. No. Like you can buy produce and wild caught fish or meat. Right. And again, you're, hoping that it's not been contaminated from the air and the acid rain and the chemicals and all that stuff. Cause again, even wild caught and grass fed, you don't know if it's contaminated or not. True. But it's lit. We're literally now Marianne yeah. in a day and time where if you do not have someone prepping your food, cooking, nourishing meals for your children, they are eating toxic poison. Like, yeah. Between, like you said, between the plastic. It's, it's out of control. I mean, I mean, so, so again, there's, there's really no way to escape it unless you have the financial wherewithal to have a $50,000 person on your payroll, especially in California, who's <laughs> prepping the meals, cooking, buying the groceries, you know, putting them in glass Tupperware, mm -hmm. not in plastic. Mm -hmm. I mean, th this is a full-time job and it's like- it is. There, there's no way right now to truly say that like my, you know, cause again, I have a 10 and 12 year old daughter and Monica's is 17, you know, yes. we manage all three of them. Like, yeah. You, what do you do? I mean, really, what do you do? I mean, yes, we prep our meals, you know, but I mean, are the girls. I do, I do it all. But Yeah, but that's what I'm saying. But I mean, like, are my daughters really going to eat prepped meals all the time at their age? No. Can I be that guy or that parent that forces them to do it? I could be, but it's like at the same time, like, you know, I'm like you, right? It's all about sovereignty and stuff. It's like, I want them to choose. I want them to watch me and Monica and then learn, you know, to, I, you know, how to eat right. I mean, they're both active. They're not, you know, obese or fat or any of that. They don't have insulin resistance, but mm -hmm. it's tough, right? I mean, as a it parent is. watching today and seeing what the choices are, it's really tough. Mm -hmm. Yeah, well, I think that we have to have some... Um, faith in our bodies that have a deep capacity to yes. heal yes. and that we don't have to be weirdos and be perfect, but we just do the best we can so that yes. when we do yes. get exposed to those things, our bodies can handle it. And if yes. we get sick and we don't feel good, then that's the motivator. 
So, you know, yeah. we have to find that balance because our kids want to go to birthday parties and they want to eat chocolate cake. And, exactly. you know, and if we keep pushing or pushing that, it's actually going to make them want to do it more. Absolutely. And, and I'm, I'm all about that. And I didn't want to rabbit hole on you and stuff like yeah. that, but it, it's good that we talk about no, that. No, because I hear this from people uh, every day. Yes. This is the, this the implementation problem. These are real issues. Okay. So back yeah. to... So back to oh, yes. BHRT with a 40 year old yep. gal who comes in. So you got the micro, you're looking at the, uh, the, the, the nutritional deficiencies. You're looking yeah. at sleep hygiene. Yeah. So you've got those dialed in. You've fixed those things. Now you've fixed the microbiome. Hopefully you're now looking into hormones. Can you talk just a little bit about, cause obviously there's a paranoia and fear with older women when it comes to like the understanding of synthetic hormones, you know, you got the WHI nonsense and all that. I don't want to go rabbit hole on that, but there's, yep. Talk a little bit the difference between synthetic, obviously, and the type that you actually prescribe. I usually do all of it together because I don't want to make people, women wait to get their hormones. I do it all together because they complement each other. Um, so but synthetic, synthetic estrogen is a breast cancer risk because they give women 100% sure. estradiol. Right. And, they, and they give them the progestin that increases their risk of cardiovascular disease. And so that's why women are scared to... to um, or they don't even want to tell their friends because they say, oh my gosh, you can't do that. Right. Whereas bioidentical hormones, they're topical. We do 20% estradiol, 80% estriol, because that's the breast protector. Right. And testosterone. And it, depending on what, what's going on. I mean, that's just like a, uh, you know, a basic thing. And then I... I so what is, know, the what is the concentration? the concentration? Because they're going to ask. What is the concentration right. of testosterone? Well, it depends. Like when I first started doing bioidentical hormones... I would, women would do really well on like 0.5 milligrams to one. Right. And now, and that puts them up to like a, a free testosterone, like about 1.5. Okay. I don't, I don't look much at the total. Right. And then, um, now I'm, I'm up to three to eight wow. milligrams. Wow. And that's again to, as my good friends would say, to exceed the disruption due to endocrine disruptors, right? Yeah, they're just being zapped everywhere. And I, exactly. I have that the 5G coming out, but I, because I experience it. Yeah. I see it every yeah. day. Why right. am I doing that little dose that's doing great? And now I have to give a lot more. Okay. So to, to summarize 20% estradiol, oh, yes. oh, what was it? So 20% yes. estradiol, 80%. That's the natural, that's the natural ratio that we have. Okay. So what was it? That was 20% estradiol? Yes. And 80% 80, was? Estriol. Estriol, right. See, and then, estriol is the breast protector. Exactly. And, and that's then, why women get breast cancer when they're postmenopausal because they don't have that anymore. So then three to eight milligrams of testosterone cream. Now is this, all, so this is all compounded in the same formula. Yeah, I, 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 I mix it all because it's more affordable and it's more convenient, but yeah, no, sometimes I mean, people want to do it separate and I'm okay. So I, sometimes I'll do oral progesterone if they have a lot of insomnia because it crosses the blood brain barrier. Sure. And then I'll do estrogen um, and testosterone cream uh, or, you know, so not everybody's different, but that's the, what everybody gets in one form or another, or whether it's all together or separate. That's awesome. So, um, you know, sharing you with Monica, so she doesn't like progesterone because it literally puts her to sleep, right? And she's obviously a maniac as far as like energy. She's like me, you know, the opposite of me. I mean, she's the male, female version of me, but uh -huh. she loves it to sleep, but she doesn't like it because she honestly feels like she could sleep all day. <laughs> I wonder so if she, she should just reduce her dose to sleep then. She is literally even just taking a tiny, tiny dose oh. of it. It just completely comatoses her. So anyway, you and I could talk off air about like tweaking her stuff. But uh, mm -hmm. okay, so to keep going on this then. So mm -hmm. because again, these are good questions and people will ask them. So from a delivery system standpoint, you already talked about the mm -hmm. cream. Do you ever use injections with women at all? No. Okay, always cream. You, always you can't do injections with women. There are but not there's a, so many idiots out there, not naming names, that do. Oh, uh, well, you're, are you talking pellets or are you talking shots? Dude, both. Oh, no. That's not, that's going to get people in trouble. I, I wouldn't do that. I, I Believe me, I, I don't recommend it. <laughs> I don't advocate it. You, I'm just you, answering, you yeah. You just mentioned it. You just mentioned uh -huh. pellets, though. You know, let me get your I would not. I would never do pellets. Okay, so no. obviously we know pellets are worthless and I could yeah. go on and on and on and I've done videos and advocate, but I've never really talked about pellets for women and how bad they are. However, I have seen women mm -hmm. with horrific extrusions and scars mm -hmm. from absurdity, as you know, right? Mm -hmm. Like, yeah. I mean, again, yeah. surgery is for surgeons, right? not for doctors who learn right. how to excise you on a weekend with a scalpel. Right. And that's what these people are doing. It's insanity, but it is. But yeah. just your soundbite on why pellets do not work in women. 
I just feel, I don't feel it's ethical. I, I hope I don't step over anybody's. No, it's fine. You know, just thing. be honest. This is the Jay Campbell podcast. Be, okay, good. Because um, it's, it's a, it is a surgical procedure. So it, it brings in a lot of income for the providers. Yes. There's no medical indication that it of works course. better than a daily cream. And it all, um, it's not controllable because it's a big exactly. mega doses at one time exactly. and it's expensive and it's, there's no, there's no indication for it. But put it this way. So, there's literally, so obviously I agree with all of that. It is a money grab. Yeah. It's the most expensive form of hormone optimization. It's completely yeah. unnecessary and unneeded. Yes. It's not uh, bioavailable. The human body does not absorb a pellet uniquely. Everybody has biochemical right. individuality and uniqueness. Yes. So it's never going to work effectively. Right. You know, and I know this from the most advanced pellet administrators, and they're never going to say this because they make money. Uh -huh. But after about 15 months, it stops working uh -huh. because the body acclimates and just right. extrudes the pellet, saying, What it the just, fuck is this? Right. So, so, so here's, yeah. I always say this caveat and poor, but the reality uh -huh. is this, the best optimization path is the one that the patient adheres to. You know that, I know that. Yeah. However, there are men and women out there, quote unquote, in harm's way. And they have mm -hmm. said to me in private conversations, Jay, I don't have a way to carry needles or cream. I'm, you know, in high risk, you know, in the field um, a lot. And if I don't have pellets, it's either no testosterone or pellets. And so, yes, we agree with you. We know it's not the most efficient delivery system, but it's the only option for us. So in that case, I will say, okay, some testosterone is better than none, but I'm with you. I think they're completely garbage. Um, I do not mm -hmm. think that they, again, they, they do not cleave molecularly correctly. They're all different. And again, you're giving a Pre surgical procedure mm -hmm. to normally someone who is not trained to be in surgery. Mm -hmm. I mean, again, I have, I've told people this, you, you, you don't know this, but you'll love this. I have a uh -huh. desktop folder of uh -huh. pictures of people who have sent me their extrusions and their oh. infections and their infections. And obviously for privacy reasons, I never show them, but I mean, right. you know, I'm sometimes like, ah, oh, you know, like, wow. email comes, I'm like, oh shit. Oh. But I mean, that's what pellet, <laughs> me. that's what pellet implant, you know, implantation it's is. It's not necessary. Yeah. Exactly. It's not necessary. Yeah. It's totally a joke. You're right. I mean, again, obviously yeah. I'm a huge believer for men. It's either injections or transdermal. And obviously yeah. I think that scrotal delivery because uh -huh. of the permeability is the yeah. best. That's why I love but, your show. <laughs> okay. So, the six pillars to optimize hormone balance. Right. So, so it's, it's sleep, nutrition, hormone balance. Though because you have to have good sleep. You have to have good Absolutely. nutrition. When I, I, I'm a detox queen. Like I, I got to get people off the bad food and we got to do the detox and you got to do your work because like you say, hormones are not a panacea. No. You, I have a lot of people come in and they just want to slap on some hormones and they think they're going to, they're, they're all inflamed and they're really unhealthy. And yeah. so um, so, so as a detox and, um, the, uh, um, purpose, yeah. you know, because yeah. every time our cells divide, we want to have the recipe and all the research is on sleep, nutrition, hormone balance, detox, exercise, and purpose. Yeah. And, and, and people like, they go, Oh, I know what purpose is. It's like, your purpose isn't like being on a TV show or writing a book. I mean, it's great if you do. <laughs> But it's about how you show up every day, you know? I mean, all humans, you all humans, exactly, by the way, all humans yeah. only have two purposes in these physical meat suits, and that is to give and receive love. Yeah, that's, that's right. It. That's it. Nothing, Don't make it hard on yourself because then everybody goes to the wrongness of themselves. Exactly. But the cells right, need right. to have this, the, the energy of purpose yes. to replicate in a healthy way. So that's how we are epigenetically influencing our DNA. When you love... <laughs> You and I could talk all day. I love it. So when, so, so when, so when you, it's so true, by the way. And again, this is the whole purpose of the Jay Campbell experience now. But uh -huh. when you love and trust yourself, your cells know it too. Right. It's so many people do not understand that until they love and trust themselves, no, you know, uh, you know, mm -hmm. uh, no optimization scheme or protocol is going to do jack shit. Right. If you don't trust and love yourself, how is anything going to affect, you know, people write into me all the time and they're like, it's so-and-so is not working. I'm really fearful, blah, blah, blah. What do I do? And I'm like, look, dude, I'm going to be honest with you until mm -hmm. you stop being in fear yeah. and second guessing yourself and becoming indecisive. And, you know, a lot of people will say, yeah, but Jay, I'm indecisive because I'm hormonally, I'm hormonally imbalanced. Yes. But you still have to choose to stop mm -hmm. being in fear. Yeah. 
And you have to love and trust yourself. And, you know, again, we come out of the womb and all of a sudden we're in survival programming. Oh my God. And it's not easy, but that's where inner work comes, right? Like all the words yeah. that you've been using on this podcast, I know you do a lot of that. I know you had, you know, issues with your son. Mm -hmm. So we have to examine, we have to look inside and go internal and figure it out. And all answers, yeah. as you know, are found within yeah. our soul. Can't leave it God. to anybody else. Yes. And, our and, and, soul and, is God. It will answer yes, everything. Yes, it does. Uh-huh. And, and the implementation part of it too, like you just said, with self-love, because I go there too with it. And not just saying self-love, but because we have to realize that we're important. And in, in sometimes people have, they, it's difficult for them to change their diet or to exercise. Or they don't have time or they're tired or whatever. I just say the self-love part is the implementing that you matter, that what your exactly. contributions, like don't you, you want to contribute, yes. you're important. And that's why I love this book. <laughs> because this is my implementation book because Beautiful. every single word is screaming at you yes. that you yes. matter so that people can implement what they need to do to change their lives. And it's simple, but it's not easy. But would they, people need people to tell them that you can do it, you know, and it's, it's just a big part of all of it is the recipe. It's so awesome that you just said that because the guy this morning, Eric said, he even said, it, I'll take you one better than all that. Mm -hmm. You matter, yes, but it's giving yourself permission. Yeah. Yeah. So many people find themselves worthless, inadequate. All the oh, story, yeah. it's right? mostly the story they tell mostly themselves. right. Mostly. So what you say when they come to you and they're like, Oh, I don't have time to exercise, or oh, I don't have time for this, or oh, I don't, you know, again, victim mindset. But it's like, yeah. dude, change your story, change your life. Yeah. Because it's a lie. And my son my says, change your goal and change your um Conduct, change you your go. goal, change your conduct, same that's thing. beautiful too. Yeah, yeah, that's beautiful too. But it's true. It's like, it's on repeat. You, you, your story Such a bad habit. becomes a repetitive like mindset. And then that yeah. mindset is how you exist. I don't have enough time. And then it could just be literally, I don't have blank. And everything yeah. in your life is I don't have. Yep. So it's and then we go to the wrongness of ourselves for not getting to it. Right. And it's then it just makes it worse. Instantly limitation. I'm so bad. Instantly scarcity. Right. Yeah. Right. right. And it's like, you know, it takes a lot of work. You know this, Marianne. You know, I mean, yes. both of you and I, we came, we came from parents that were literally yeah. of a depression mindset. Yeah. Very, very. Our parents were, I mean, again, you know, in their defense, yes. they existed in times where you went yes. to bed at night without food. These yep. people today in our society, our kids, your kids, they oh never goodness. wanted anything. No. They live in an instant gratification world. And so yeah. it's really difficult to teach them work effort. It's, it's difficult to teach them like desire when it's so instant. You know, I always say like, you know, they live in the instant gratification culture. There's an app for that. I can have it right now. What do I, I have know. to work for? I can use Twitter. I can use, I mean, Alexa or right. Google or Siri, and they find the answers for me. I know. People don't even critically think. Uh -uh. Some it's guy true. put yesterday, some guy put yesterday on Twitter is one of the greatest things I've ever seen. And we've all experienced this. He said, mm -hmm. me at the cash register, it was $18 and 50 cents. He gives the cash register girl, you know, young girl, $20 and 53 cents. And she stares at him blank face for 45 seconds. He's he eventually said, uh, just give me $5 back. And she says, okay, that's what I thought. Gives him $5 back and he leaves. He goes back and he gives it to her, but that's where we are. Yeah. Kids today can't even mm -hmm. critically think beyond the technology that does it for them. Right. What are we going to do? <laughs> We have a choice. We yeah, have we do. Good parents. We have, yes. We have to detrain them. We have to take yeah. the technology out of their hands. Yes. We have to teach them to go Difficult. out into nature. Yes. We have to teach them to be introspective. I mean, you know this. Technology yeah. has killed curiosity. Yes, it has. And when you don't have curiosity, you're bored. How many times, I'm sure you've experienced this, my daughters, yeah. my daughters uh -huh. who have everything will literally say to me, Dad, I'm bored. I'm bored. I just say, I say boredom is a state of mind. Listen, my dad, when I was a kid, we would never say that because he'd beat us. Oh, I right. Literally, I literally <laughs> said to her, I said, you're bored? I got something uh -huh. for you to do. Right. I took her downstairs in our basement and I gave her a toothbrush and I had her start scrubbing the lint off of the carpet in my work room. Awesome. I mean, it's- He's not going to say that to you again. But, these, <laughs> but, but kids literally today are yeah. consuming one thing after the other. 
They yeah. go from technology to screen to TV to yeah. their homework to whatever They're addicted nonsense. to it. Yeah. No curiosity. And there's nothing inside themselves anymore. No curiosity. It's when just, you and I were growing up, we didn't have anything. Anything nothing. that we had, we had to create. Yep. You went out in the yard, you played, you played kick the can, yep. army guys, you know, superheroes, whatever you did yep. was creation. You had to create it. Mm -hmm. And today they just want people there's to- There's no consume. pathways there. It's all consumption. It's yeah. all consumption. One thing after the other. One thing after the other. Kids, young male boys, video games, girls, Instagram, Snapchat. Uh -huh. Look at me. I know. It's, it's just one. Who would have thought this would be? Who would have thought? It's incredible. It's incredible, yeah. man. Okay, so this has been a phenomenal podcast. Just yeah. the last point that I want to cover with you real quick is, mm -hmm. so from a solution standpoint, because you're a solution provider, I'm a solution provider. Yeah. What can women do right now who are watching this podcast, who are clearly, you know, probably in the situation, you said 98%. Mm -hmm. What can you have them do or what would you have them do right now to take action and find solutions? Well, I um, detoxing, uh, you could do that on your own. You could sweating, pooping, peeing, breathing. So get in a sauna, um, do some enemas if you don't mind. Sure. Um, uh, change, just eat organic and don't, we don't have to, uh, you know, cut calories or anything. Just eat organic and eat real food and yeah. stay hydrated. Get lots of good sea salt. Be happy, have fun. You know, that is huge. That's a yeah. lot. Yeah. That's a lot for a lot of people just to do that. No, it's absolutely massive. So if somebody is watching the show right now, like, and they want to work with you, um, I'm not even going to ask about telemedicine, but like, how would you have them reach out to work with you? I mean, do they, if they're in Florida, because again, there's a lot of women that are going to watch the show and say, wow, I want to work with you. So do they, are they going to have to fly up to like Sacramento and then meet with you for one day so you can meet with them physically in person? I mean, how would the process work? According to my license, I have to see people once a year in person, but then we do uh, phone consults for follow-ups, but I try not to do a lot of follow-ups because I don't want it to be a burden for people. So I, right. I try really hard to be available by email and, and then I, I we usually have an initial visit and then a follow-up and then a follow-up after see if the plan works. And so we're at em embodywellness.com yep. and my, my email is Marianne at embodywellness.com. I'm, I'm going to edit yeah. that out. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> I'm just kidding. I'm just okay. Kidding. Please do if you need to. That's so awesome. Okay. So guys, please, ladies, obviously who are watching this, um, Marianne is a wealth of knowledge. She can definitely hormonally optimize you. She's been doing it literally for close to 15 years, which are very few people in the world that are doing that. Obviously with massive success, again, it's embodywellness.com. Go to their site, you know, support her. If you are out of state, um, the closest airport would be Sacramento airport for you yes. guys. Okay. Yeah. So again, just reach out to them, make them happy. I'm sure you guys have a lot of patients that are probably out of state now, right? Yeah. So, awesome. Yeah. Awesome. Okay. Well, yeah. Marianne, I really appreciate you coming on the show today. It's been Thanks, absolutely Jay. phenomenal. And thank you so much for what you do and you and Monica. And thank you, really. You make awesome. a big difference. Awesome. Okay. Well, I will talk to you soon. Okay, guys, thank okay. you so much for supporting the show. Okay. And obviously when this podcast runs, um, it will probably be sometime later in March. So hopefully my new site will be up. But if it's not, again, go to embodywellness.com and support the fine people that show up on the show.